He's doing something. Praise the Lord. Well, this morning I'm excited to share with you, and I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the ladies here today. It's truly an honor to be able to share with you on this day. My message is entitled, A Gentle Strength. A Gentle Strength. And for some of you, you've been here over the past few weeks. We've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. The Apostle Paul speaks to the church in Galatia. He writes in Galatians chapter 5 about the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit are all those things that come forth as the Spirit of God makes himself known from within you. As God manifests good things, wonderful things to show his character and his nature from within you. Paul calls them fruit because the Lord wants to make us fruitful and abundant. Amen. He wants us to produce good fruit. And so I want to recap for you. Some of you, this is a recap. For some, this is an introduction. Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 22. We'll read through uh, verse 26 here momentarily. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Paul says nobody's going to call you into violation if you do these things. Why? Because these are all wonderful things given by God. Remember, the devil's not going to tell you to love somebody. He's not going to tell you to have joy. He's not going to tell you to be at peace. The devil's not going to do these things. Therefore, they are not unlawful. They are good things from God in the spirit of God. Verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So we no longer live for ourselves. We live for Christ. And we desire to partner and walk with him. Verse 25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So as Paul talks about living by the Spirit and the evidence that comes from having a life in the Spirit, empowered by God, he talks about all these different fruits. There's nine in total, and we hit on self-control last week. I want to hit on gentleness this week. Talk about gentleness. And I want to speak uh, to the gentlemen and the ladies, but primarily to the ladies, because gentleness is something I believe the Lord wants to bring back in the body of Christ, and in the world overall. He wants to bring it back because we've had uh, uh, an attack, something that has been prolific against women for a long time, and that has caused uh, a rift in the body of Christ. We've been teaching men to be gentle men. We've been teaching men how to love and serve and have humility and show uh, compassion and be meek, but we've taught women more and more and more how to be bold, how to take authority, how to take a stand, and what we're causing is an imbalance. Now, I want to express to you today, I'm not against bold women, right? There's nothing wrong with bold women, nothing wrong with mighty women of God. There's nothing wrong with that. However, unfortunately, we're getting some mixed messages, We're getting messages sent to women that they're meant to overtake. Or or you have to stand up and assert and uh, and be an aggressor and be over, not just men, but other women as well. And I believe this is why the Apostle Paul goes on in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 26. He talks about the fruit of the Spirit, but he gives us a, a little caution here. He says, let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. So Paul says, hey, hold up. Now, as we are practicing these things, as we are living these things out in the spirit of God, let us be careful and watch for certain things that try to rise up, for certain attacks that try to come against us, especially our ladies. And ladies, let me tell you, it was several months ago that I sat down and I talked to Pastor Angie and I said, babe, I'm feeling in the spirit there's an attack against our women at Common Ground. And I said, God, what do we do with this? We sat and we talked and we prayed, and the Lord said, it's not the time to bring it to the front. It's not the time to address it that way. It's a time to be humble and gentle 
And the Lord brought about a certain strategy uh, against certain things that were happening behind the scenes, some, some, some strange demonic things that were happening behind the scenes. And I said, God, uh, we, we, we need to uh, uh, address this and come against this. And the Lord said, no, be gentle, be humble. And the Lord's dealt mightily with it, powerfully with it, in a way that I could not imagine through gentleness. Because you see gentleness in the Greek translation of the New Testament. It is meekness, humility, right? It's a certain way of being where you're not trying to puff up and be proud. If anything, you're saying, I'm okay with who I am because I know who I am. We just sang, I am who you say I am, Lord. I don't have to be anybody that somebody wants me to be. I don't have to be better than her. I don't have to be better than him. I don't have to prove anything to anyone. I am who God has called me to be. And so this is what the Lord wants to give back to the feminine soul today, that you are who he's called you to be, that you are not what anybody else says you are or would try to make you out to be. And you see, Satan wants every woman to be unhappy with God's perfect design. He wants you to be unhappy with God's perfect design. It was his attack from the beginning. He told the woman, you can be more like God. You can be better than what you are. And she was deceived into believing that she was not the crown of creation. That she was not wonderful. That she was not a daughter of the king. That she did not have everything at her disposal. That she did not have dominion. And she was called to be by the side of her husband. Not beneath him. Not behind him. But by his side. And the two of them would rule and have dominion. The devil came in and had a unique attack. And don't think that he doesn't have an attack today. To try to get you deceived into believing that you've got to take something more. That you've got to grasp for something higher. That you've got to get something else to complete you. You don't. You are perfect in who God called you and created you to be. And you see, Satan wants every woman provoking and envying other men, other women, trying to find some other means. But God's called you to reveal a unique and gentle strength, a strength that no one else can compare to. And as you ascend to this, as you humble yourself, God will exalt you. The Bible says he he, he does what? He exalts the humble, right? He gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. He resists those who are proud. And so what does Satan want to do? He wants women to fall into the trap of becoming proud, becoming haughty, asserting and aggressing themselves so that they are never exalted. And this is what we're seeing. We've seen so often that women have been oppressed over time. And the outcry has not been humility. It's been, well, I'm just going to come against that with more force. But then what happens? Force meets force. And there's contention and there's strife. And the Lord wants to bring an end to the strife and the provoking and the envy. And he wants to bring unity and peace and joy. He wants to cause us to be okay with being meek and humble. Because he wants to do his perfect will within us. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek. Somebody help me out. For they will inherit the earth. Amen. The meek will inherit the earth. He wants you to know that your inheritance is found in meekness. He wants you to understand that your inheritance is not found in trying to take it. Nobody can take their inheritance. But what do you do? You simply live and receive it. And so he's saying, yo, you don't have to try to grasp for anything because it will be given to you so long as you are meek and humble yourself. And so we need to know today that our opponent is not the woman next to us. It's not the man next to us. We have a real enemy. And he's the enemy of our souls. He's the enemy of God. And he wants us to believe that we need to attack each other. But no, we're going to blow the lid off of this thing today and discover what we really are called to be. Who we are really called to live like. We are going to see how amazing it is to have this gentle strength in Christ. I want to point you to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. 
We're going to be here for the remainder of the time. Philippians chapter 4. And the letter to the Philippians is incredible. I was studying this week and astounded at what the Lord revealed. The Lord led me to a verse in Philippians we'll get to in a moment. And, you know, God speaks on so many levels. You just never know what God's going to do. As I was reading in Philippians, I was encouraged to find out and, and encouraged to dig into the background of how this church started. And it just so happened that the Philippian church began with a group of women who were hungry for the gospel. Did you know that? It's incredible. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 16, you can read it yourself. It says that a woman named Lydia welcomed the apostles in the city of Philippi. They came to preach and they came on their missionary journeys. And a woman named Lydia welcomed them. She insisted, you got to come into my house. She welcomed them and she was the first host for the church in Philippi. And then there was a group of women who responded to the gospel. The Bible says that the women in Philippi were the main ones who were hungry for truth. And this is how the church was founded. We read in Philippians chapter 4, the apostle Paul is writing to a church that is heavy in female leadership, that is strong in femininity. And so Paul writes to them, and he shares this with us. He says in Philippians 4, 1, therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I long, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my coworkers whose names are in the book of life. Now, this is huge. You got to get this. This is huge because in the New Testament letters, whenever one of the apostles would write to a church, if you got shouted out by name, you were, you were kind of a big deal. You, you, were, you were something because they didn't shout everybody out. Sometimes they would just say, hey, you know, greet the saints over here or greet the God's people over here, greet them, greet them. But he was intentional, Paul was intentional about shouting out these women. And he mentions them in such a way that he says they were my coworkers. They were co-laborers, they were by my side. They were not under me. They were not standing behind me. He says they contended with me at my side with the gospel. They were right there doing the work of the ministry with me. They had value. These women are powerhouses in the church. He says these are amazing women of God is what Paul is declaring. And how do we know that for sure? Because he groups them together with a man named Clement. And Clement is believed to have actually taken over for the apostles after a certain time. He's known in church history. And so he groups them with Clement and he says, hey, these are coworkers along with Clement, meaning that they had equal footing. They had a standing in the church and they were not beneath men, but they were right there next to the men in the church. And so this really blows away those concepts that we read in Corinthians where people say, well, women should be silent in the church. Paul wrote that. But why would Paul write this and be schizophrenic? Is he, is he talking on both sides of his face? What's going on, right? Unless that was for a certain church at a certain time, doing certain things, right? But his overall standing is, listen, I love beautiful, wonderful women of God, powerful women of God. This is what Paul is talking about. And Paul pleads for them. He says to the church, listen, I need Euodia and Syntyche to get along. You got to help them. Be of the same mind with one another, connect with one another, solve their disagreement. Why? Because they were essential to the church. And I want to express to you today, my ladies, you are essential to the church. You are. We need you because none of us will be here without you. You're essential to the church. We cannot do this thing without women of God. And see, Paul practically begs them. They're pillars of the church. He wants them to get along with each other. And we don't know the nature of their disagreement. We don't know why they were dividing. But one thing's for sure. Paul knew that there was a strategy. There was a strategy coming against them. 
Because if Satan could divide the women of the church, if Satan could take out the women, then he could take out the church. If Satan takes out the women, he takes out the church. We, we talk about and we believe that men are essential. We are both essential in the fight. We need each other. But here's the thing, and here's what science statistics has proven. Here's what people have studied over time, that if women don't come to church, you ain't got a church. I'm sorry to say, gentlemen, but the numbers don't lie. It says women are 100%, not 80, not 60, 100% more likely to start a new Bible study in the church. If a new ministry is kicking off, chances are a woman is behind it. When we call for prayer, when we say, hey, we need prayer, guess who's at the forefront? The women. Women are showing up to prayer meetings. Women are coming through. Women are holding it down. I love my ladies on my staff because they are animals and I put them up against any man. <laughs> Lita is my, <laughs> Lita is it. She's the real deal. Yo, I take Lita over anybody. Lita's ride or die with me. Don't leave me, Lita. I will find you. Can't let Lita go. Pastor Trish, God bless her. Please keep her in prayer. She's with her father. Keep her in prayer. God bless her. She's with her father in Orlando, and um, her, her father's in a bad way, so please keep her lifted up. And um, she's precious to us. But without what she does, and listen, this weekend we, we, we found out. That, you ain't that right, Frank. We found out without Pastor Trish, man, it was, it was, it was we, we worked it out, but we felt it. We felt the lack of her presence because that's what it is to have a powerful woman of God. And she's not running around proclaiming it. She's not running around trying to get in your face. But listen, she's felt. You know that, that she's needed. You know that she is a pillar in this church. And this is what we're talking about. Praise God. This is what we're talking about, the gentle strength. You, you would never hardly hear from her or Pastor Angie, but they're powerful, powerful women of God. And if Satan can get to the women of God, then that means that there is no hope for the church. Wow. Wow. Why is that? Why is it that women are so essential to the church? Why is it that Paul pleaded? He said, please let these women get along. Please make sure this thing stays unified because women have a unique connection to the heart of God that men, that we don't have. Ours is different. Women have a very unique connection to the heart of God because God created you, ladies, to understand the subtle changes in an environment, the subtle changes. He's developed you. We call it female intuition, but it's God-given. It's supernatural. Women know things without knowing them. My wife would tell me what's wrong with me before I know something wrong with me. Don't you, don't you ever, you, you hear that, gentlemen? You know what I'm talking about. She says to you, hey, baby, what's wrong? I'm, I'm cool. I'm good. What's wrong? I'm good. What's wrong? Well, you know, baby, I'm actually going, you know, you say, well, how did you do that? But what happened? She knows what's up with you. She's got dreams. She's saying, baby, I had a dream that you, oh, man, she got me out. But she knows, she can sense it, she can feel it, it's in her. God's developed you that way. And I'm going to tell you one of the main ways that God has, has worked in you, that ladies, you may not even realize it, and some of you do, some of you may not. I'm going to tell you this, God operates in cycles and in seasons. You feel, you feel me where I'm going with this? God operates in cycles. Women, how do you operate? I don't mean to get too descriptive, forgive me. But how does your life go from cycle to cycle and cycles? A woman knows her cycle. A woman is very familiar, and if there's a little change, something's off. She's like, oh, uh-uh, something ain't right. She can sense it because it operates. She operates in a cycle. God operates in cycles and times and in seasons. So you're in the rhythm of God. God has a rhythm where he says this comes around at this time and at this time and at this time. A woman, you work like clockwork to come around at this time and at this time. And if you were irregular, you're saying, mm, okay, God, I need to get right. Something's not okay. 
When a woman is pregnant, when she's with child, when she first becomes a mother, you know you're carrying a child. You're sensitive to every little move, every little thing your body does. You know, my wife was pregnant. I remember um, she was carrying our, our beautiful daughter, and she'd have these little pains and this and that, and, and she would just know when something was, was weird, when something was, was off, or she would just know, you know, when she was uncomfortable, when the baby was uncomfortable, and I remember, you know, she could feel it, and she said, oh, man, you know, her, her foot is in my ribs, and she just, you know, she had to try to work it out. She could feel what was going on, all the little different things that were happening, and even once you've had a child, this is incredible. It's super natural. A woman knows what's going on with her child. You can feel it from miles away, can't you? you? You say, man, something's going on. I need to go check on him. I need to go check on her. I need to call him. You got a grown man, you're calling him up. A grown woman, you're calling. You know something's going on. This is the heart that God has given you to be sensitive to these different things happening. And this is what Paul was pleading for. He says, listen, don't take the heart away from the church. Don't take the sensitivity away from the church. The Lord showed me a long time ago. He said, listen, your wife is the heart. You're the head, right? She revealed, he revealed, listen, she feels things. There's things she's sensitive to, and there's things that the Lord gives me by, by uh, understanding, men, by, by wisdom, that he'll communicate with us. We communicate and we hear from the Lord and we get drives, man. We have impulses. We have instinct. But a woman operates as the Lord gives her understanding and she feels it first. Even before she can think it, she feels it. It's incredible. It's incredible. And this heart is so incredible, so beautiful as it's expressed in the house of God. And that's what God wants to restore, the feminine heart, the sensitive heart. Over time, women have becoming hard-hearted, becoming so tough. Why? Because you've had to be. Because you've had to stand in. And many of our women are saying today, you know, I've got to be the woman and the man in the household. But you don't. But you don't. Don't go speaking that over yourself. Because you can't be. I can't, I can't be a woman. You can't be a man. You don't, don't, don't try because the burden that you're not meant to take on. You can't do it all. You can't be it all. Be who he's created you to be. Wow. Wow. We notice in Philippians chapter 4 that Paul desperately cries out for these women who are mothers of the church. They're nurturing the saints. They're nurturing the people of God. And we need to know today that the church needs mothers. We need women of God who will nurture, who will guide, who will instruct, who will train, who will teach, and who will do it in such a way that it's unique and it complements the masculinity. Doesn't overtake it, doesn't usurp it, it complements. We need strong, gentle, passionate women who are not ashamed to be humble women of God, who don't see it as a weakness because the Lord is breaking a lie on your life today and the lie that he is breaking is that you are less than that's a lie from the enemy and you need to know today that you are not less than no you are not less than God wants to lift you up exalt you bless you call you to be every wonderful thing with every spiritual blessing in Christ he wants that for you so don't get off track and get to believing anything else. It's time for you to be who you were created to be. Don't allow pride or insecurity to get in the way of that. For some of you, you might be saying, I'm just with the kids. I'm just, you know, the, the mom. I just do this, and, and, you know, it's not a big deal. And, you know, I wish I was doing something else. Now we have many women coveting something outside of motherhood. But let me tell you, motherhood is a calling, and it's a blessing, don't despise the blessing. You might say, man, I wish I could go out and pursue higher education. You know, I don't feel like, like I, I have value because I don't have a degree or I don't have this that, that another man has or another woman has. No, you have value because the Lord will give you all that you need, all the wisdom and understanding that you need. You might say, I haven't excelled in a career. 
I haven't taken off to the place where I think I should go. But understand that God can bring you somewhere where you don't have qualifications, where you don't have something on your resume, and you say, how in the world did God do that? That's incredible. If you're not as petite, ladies, let's just be real, you're not unattractive. You're not lost. You don't have to compete, right? We need to break these lies, break the bondage of these lies in Jesus' name. That you don't have to be anything else or anyone else. And see, as Paul speaks to the church in Philippi, this wonderful feminine church, he says these words that we sang, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord when? Always. And just in case you missed the first one, he says, I'll say it again. Rejoice. Wow. Rejoice. What's one of the attacks that's coming against our women today? A lack of joy. A lack of joy. He could have you like Eve in the garden, surrounded by wonderful things all around. Surrounded by a lush paradise, and yet somehow you're lacking something. Yet somehow you don't know why. But something is missing from your life. That's a lie. It's a lie. Rejoice in the Lord. We sang, I will bring praise, God. We sang, I will rejoice. I will declare that God is my victory. That's what we sang. He said in verse 5, let your gentleness, of all things, of all the fruit of the Spirit, Paul says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. He says, look, Jesus is coming. He will return. Let your gentleness show. Let that gentle nature from within you be revealed. And let it be beautiful and Christ-like. Let it be wonderful for everyone to see. You don't have to worry about being contentious and being seen as tough and independent and not having need for anyone or anything. You ain't got to tell nobody. Right? I get a kick out of that. You know all the songs now? I'm an independent woman and this and that. I'm, I'm bold. I'm great. I don't need no man. If you don't need him, why you keep talking about you don't need him? If you don't need him, you ain't got to tell him. Right? If you're doing your thing, handle your business. You don't need to tell nobody. You know, it's like all these dudes talking about, I'm a gangster. I'm a thug. I'm this, I'm that. Why are you telling everybody? If you a gangster, be, handle your business in the street. Right? Don't be telling everybody. That means that you got something to prove. How about we just say, I am a child of God. I am a woman of God. And everything that comes with it, that's what I am. Wow. Verse 6, Paul addresses these things that are happening. He says, do not be anxious about anything. Ladies, how many of you struggle with anxiety? It's no, it's no surprise that anxiety is so uniquely feminine. Not that men don't struggle with it, but it is so predominantly feminine where your mind is racing, you can't sleep at night, where you're troubled about what's going to happen, who's doing what, when, did everything get taken care of? If anything is out of place, you, you, you just can't get peace. Paul says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, thank him in advance, present your request to God. Say to God, this is what I'm asking for, and this is what I'm thanking you for. Verse 7, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. You may not get it, but you're at peace. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He's going to guard you. He's going to cover you. Whether you're worried about this, worried about that, whether it's the kids, whether it's your home, whether it's your health, no matter what it is, he's going to guard you and give you perfect peace. You can cast your cares on Jesus. You can give the Lord your anxieties. You can say it all belongs to you, God. I don't want it. I don't want to be this anxious mess. I don't want to drive my husband up the wall. 
so many times saying, what about this? What about that? No, you don't have to be that. You don't have to be that, that, that uh, how, how do you say it? The proverbial nagging wife. The one who says, uh, uh, and he's like, okay, I, I just can't. Give me one thing. Give me one thing. Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. The Lord wants to free you from that. Liberate you from that. Why? Why does he want to do that? Because he wants you to know who you really are. He wants you to know how precious you are. You know, you know how we came up with the word woman? Eve was presented to Adam. Adam woke up out of his sleep and he said, whoa, man. Right? No, no, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. Some of y'all are going to be like, Pastor Brian, I don't like that you said that. That was not correct, sir. It's not sound theology. Okay. I submit. I submit. <laughs> I submit. That's not what really happened. But that's good, though. But that's good. Come on now. That's good, somebody. That's good. That's what I say to my wife. I hope you gentlemen are saying that to your wives. I'm saying that. I'll be like, whoa. We're, we can't help it. We're driven by desire. We have drives. That's how men are. Women are sensitive. You know, we, we don't always have those sensitivities. Okay, I digress. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to wrap up with this. Philippians chapter 4, and verses 8 and 9. We're going to close with these verses. Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, let this soak into your spirit today. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such a thing. Some translation says meditate on such things, right? Set your mind on these things. Not the things that drag you off, not the things that distract you, not the things that would try to harm your soul, that would try to cause you to believe a lie, but meditate on the things that God would give you, the wonderful, beautiful things of God. Verse 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, Paul says, put it into practice. In other words, Paul says, I've been following Jesus, now you follow Jesus like you see me follow Jesus. Ladies, I would encourage you, get with a woman who you see serving God, who you see who's confident in the grace of God, and link up and connect with her and follow her. And encourage your sisters in the faith to follow Jesus. And whenever things get, get weird and get skewed, and, and whenever somebody's saying something they shouldn't, or whenever somebody has an attitude that they shouldn't, love them and be gentle with them. Speak the truth to, to her in love and say, listen, I know you're hurting, sister, but that's not how it is. Maybe you're, you're feeling and you're seeing things through that reality, but that's not really what it is. Wow. Paul says, and the God of peace will be with you. I want to encourage you, ladies, today.